Karibuni katika kipindi cha ongea na shangazi. Mimi ni Maria Sarongi Sahai. Na kama kawaida yetu, atuko pamoja na mashangazi ambao pamoja tutajadili swala muhimu sana linaluhusiana na fedha na uchumi wa nchi. Na leo kama kawaida tupo na shangazi Fatma na pia tuko na shangazi mwanahamisi ambaye yeye kwa leo ameshindwa kufika katika studio zetu lakini tuko naye kwa njia ya Skype. Lakini pia tupo na mtaalam ambaye anaitwa Ali Khan Sachu. Kwa kifupi kabisa tupate kujua kwamba Ali Khan Sachu ni nani. Ali Khan Sachu ni mkurugenzi mtendaji wa mtandao ambao unashughulika na masuala ya fedha nchini Kenya na yeye pia anasimamia dawati maalum la mambo ya fedha jijini London na pia uh, anashauri taasisi maarufu kama Credit Suisse, First Boston, Sumitomo Bank na kadhalika. Nchini Kenya pia unaweza kampata kupitia uh, mtandao wake wa rich.co.ke na pia ni mmoja wa uzaji rasmi wa data katika soko la hisa la Nairobi na ana kampuni nyingine inayotoa huduma kwa wawekezaji Afrika Mashariki uh, mawasiliano kwa umma na vyombo vya habari ni mchangiaji katika vyombo mbalimbali kama kwa mfano Al Jazeera na BBC. Asante sana um, Ali Khan, karibu sana. Asante na shukuru sana. Asante. Na leo hii uh, tunashughulika zaidi na kujadili kwa kirefu zaidi swala hili la kifedha na kiuchumi. Na tunaposema swala la kifedha, labda kwa upana wake ili tuweze nadhani vizuri kuwaweka wana watazamaji wetu waweze kuelewa kwa nini tunasema fedha fedha kuna tukio ambalo wiki iliyopita lilitokea na tuliona kwenye magazeti kidogo lakini hasa kwenye mitandao kijamii ambapo tuliona kwamba baadhi ya maduka ya fedha jijini Dar es Salaam yalikaguliwa na uh, maafisa wa BOT Bank of Tanzania au benki kuu na kulikuwa na hatua fulani ambazo zilichukuliwa Hebu tupate kusikia kidogo kutoka ripoti maalum iliyoandaliwa na Kwanza TV. Katika hali isiyo ya kawaida hapo jana, wananchi na wafanyabiashara wa maduka ya kubadilisha fedha walibaki na taharuki kufuatia zoezi la kufungiwa maduka yao bila kujua kinachoendelea. Zoezi hilo linadaiwa kuongozwa na askari polisi na watu waliojitambulisha wanatokea benki kuu ya Tanzania na walipofika katika maduka hayo kwa mujibu wa mashuhuda wakiwamo walinzi wa maduka hayo waliwaona wakiondoka na simu za mkononi fedha pamoja na kompyuta mpakato yani laptop Kuna kitu kimetokea jana bio change hapa Ni wale, watu wa benki kuu wamekuja yani kama wamevamia wamesitukiza wameingia wamepiga mahesabu ndani humo alafu wakachukua yani mizigo yote iliyokuwa ndani hela kompyuta nini yani vifaa in short vifaa vyote vinavyotumika ndani humo walichukua akaondoka navyo nimeingia asubuhi kumlivu mwezangu kumpokea lindo nikaambiwa kwamba hapa bwana kulikuwa kumetoka ya matatizo matatizo wamekuja wame maaskari hapa wametanda mji sehemu yote wameingia ndani wamechukua kila kitu wamechukua kompyuta mashine ya mahesabu wameondoka nani kwa hivyo ndio hali halisi ilivyotokea ah tujadadisi kwa sababu walivyochukua tu hela wanaondoka kwa hiyo kila mtu akawa anashangaa unaona kwa watu kujua kilichoendelea ndani kwa sababu si waliongea wao ndani kwa ndani na wakaanza kubeba mizigo wakaondoka kwa watu kujua kilichoendelea ah kikweli sina taarifa zozote Uh, ila nilizosikia tu fununu juu juu kwamba kuna baadhi ya building changes zimefungwa. Ni kweli itatuathiri kama mimi sisi ofisini kwetu huwa tunatumia dola. Kwa mara nyingi huwa tunakuja kuzichange na building change kubwa ya mimi tunategemea masaki ni hii na hizo zingine. Sasa kama kwa sasa hivi wanasema wamezifunga na mara lazima tuwasiliki na maana ukatafuta building change mjini kwa muda unapoteza eh, maofisi yanataka kufanya kazi zao. Kwa hiyo kweli tutaathirika na tumeathirika kama sasa hivi mimi inabidi niende mjini nikatafute bill change wakati ile kwa bill change yangu ya karibu ilikuwa ndani ya dakika tano, dakika saba na kwa nimemaliza shu za nguo kwa kweli tunaathirika e, jana kutokea tukio ambalo la kufungwa biuro kwa kweli mimi sikuepo lakini shift ilikuepo ndio waliona tukio lakini nilipokuja tukaambia kwamba biuro imefungwa basi kabisa tunaweza kulinda hatuna jinsi na tatizo la kufungwa tujui kwaambia biuro imefungwa kwa leo 
Zoezi hilo limefanyika jijini Dar es Salaam ikiwa ni zaidi ya mwezi mmoja kupita tangu kufungwa kwa maduka ya kubadilisha fedha jijini Arusha. Zoezi ambalo lilionekana kuleta athari kubwa hususan kwa wafanyabiashara. Sasa swali linabaki, nini kinaendelea kati ya benki kuu na maduka ya kubadilisha fedha? Taarifa ya benki kuu iliyotolewa baada ya kuanza TV kupiga simu kupata ufafanuzi wa jambo hilo ilieleza kwamba walifanya ukaguzi wa kawaida kama ambavyo anabainisha mkurugenzi wa usimamizi wa fedha wa benki kuu ya Tanzania bwana Jerry Sabi. Mnamo tarehe 27 Februari 2019 benki kuu ya Tanzania ilifanya ukaguzi wa kawaida wa maduka ya kubadilisha fedha za kigeni jijini Dar es Salaam na kubaini kwamba maduka mengi yanaendesha biashara hiyo pasipo kuzingatia sheria, kanuni, taratibu na taratibu za utoaji wa huduma ya kubadilisha fedha za kigeni. Kufuatia ukaguzi huo, Benki Kuu ya Tanzania imeanza utaratibu wa kufuta leseni za maduka yote yanayoendesha biashara hiyo bila kuzingatia masharti ya leseni. Zoezi hili linaendelea. Kazi ya walinzi hivi sasa ni kulinda maduka yaliyofungwa na hawana chochote wanachokijua. Zoezi hilo limefanyika katika maeneo ya Sinza, na Manga, Masaki, Oyster Bay na maeneo mengineyo. Hatua hii inatajwa kuwa ni mwendelezo wa kuhakikisha maduka ya fedha yanafanya biashara zake kwa mujibu wa sheria. Lakini bado wengi wanabaki na maswali likiwemo nini hatima ya maduka hayo? Kutoka Dar es Salaam, Asia Gamba, Kwanza TV. ya kupata kusikia kidogo ripoti hii hebu sasa tuendelee katika mjadala wetu na katika mjadala wetu kabla hatujauliza swali hasa kwa shangazi Fatma kuna tukio lingine ambalo lilitokea siku hiyo hiyo ambapo ukaguzi uko unaendelea na tulipata taarifa kwamba gazeti uh, la Kiingereza la The Citizen limefungiwa na limefungiwa kwa siku saba uh, sisi kwanza TV tumebahatika kupata nakala ya barua ambayo ilituma kwenda kwa mwananchi communication ambao ndio wachapishaji na watoaji wa The Citizen na kuna vitu fulani wamevizungumzia ambavyo kama mwanasheria labda nianze na wewe shangazi e, sasa hivi kuna hii sheria mpya ya ya, ya vyombo vya habari Media Service Act au Media Service Law ambayo imesema wazi kwamba e, gazeti linaweza likafungiwa kwa nia gani labda wewe ulivyoipitia umeonaje um kitu cha kwanza ni kwamba sheria ya huduma za habari haimpi um, haimpi mkurugenzi wa habari power ya kufungia gazeti inampa mkurugenzi power ya kuondoa leseni chini ya um, ya kipengele cha tisa lakini hiyo ni swala tofauti kabisa kwa sababu walipoamua kuifungia um, the citizen walisema kwamba wanaifunga kwa mujibu wa uh, kipengele cha kifungu cha hamsini na mbili moja a hamsini na mbili c hamsini na mbili d hamsini na mbili e cha sheria ya huduma ya habari Uh, mwaka 2016. Uh -huh. Sasa ili tuelewane kwa sababu hii sheria ninayo hapa kitu cha kwanza sijui pengine wameibadilisha <coughs> sheria lakini mimi sijui nimetafuta sijaiona eh, amendment ya sheria hii hivi vifungu 52 moja a 52 c 52 d na 52 e hamna kabisa havimo kwenye sheria hii Um, halafu pia wamesema wameifungia kwa mujibu wa uh, kifungu hamsini na moja hamsini moja a uh, roman numeral moja hamsini b hamsini d na hamsini e na hivyo hadipo pia kuna <laughs> kwa, kwa hivyo unajua 
na sheria hii sio kwamba labda imefanyiwa marekebisho hajalifanyiwa nimetafuta nimezitafuta hajafanyiwa marekebisho mimi kitu kinoni kinoni kera ni arrogance kwa Kiswahili sijui neno arrogance ni nini um, ngumu kidogo kuipata um, ni kuwa na wake bubabe au kuwa na wakika wa kupita una unafukua mbabe kiasi kwamba hujali mm -hmm. mm. hata kama ume ume side sheria sawa au haipo kwa sababu una power una power kwa hivyo sheria hai haijali hai, hai, haina maana tena lakini kwa sasa hakuna unana... kifungu hata kimoja kilichotumika katika kuifungia ambao kipo kwenye sheria eh kilo kuwepo Uh, unajua nini hakuna kwa sababu wametaja wame hamsini moja a moja ndogo haipo hakipo hicho kifungu hakipo kabisa um, huu bande wa kufanya wa, watu wa kufanya wanavotaka kiasi kwamba hata sheria haijali maana unajua ni dharau lakini je ni kuuliza hilo swali inakuwaje kwamba kuna barua rasmi inatoka na kama hivi vifungo kweli havipo kama wanavyosema kwamba umejaribu kuangalia sheria umejaribu kufuatilia na havipo sasa swali langu ambalo linakuja ni kwamba ni kitu gani kinaweza kikapelekea labda gazeti kufungiwa kuna sababu zipi okay so mimi nafikiri wali maana walikuwa wanamaanisha kwamba walitaka kuki, walitaka kusema kwamba uh, gazeti limefanya makosa ya uchochezi chini ya kifungu hamsini moja a hamsini moja b na hamsini moja d hamsini moja hamsini moja e haipo mm. okay mm -hmm. kwa hivyo nafikiri na walikusudia chini ya vifungo hivyo ndio vifungo vilivyo kuepo mm -hmm. unless wame na hapa nataka ni, 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 niwe correct lakini ni nimetafuta sana amendment na sidhani nimeambiwa mimi kwamba hakuna amendment ya sheria hii. Mm -hmm. Kwa hivyo hii sheria nimeipata kwenye tovutu, tovuti ya ya bunge. Bunge. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sasa nadhani walikuwa wanataka kusema kwamba kulikuwa na uchochezi. Uh, Ndio wanakusudia. Wana Sasa tujue uchochezi maana ya uchochezi ni nini? Mm -hmm. Um, chini ya sheria hiyo hiyo ya hudumu ya habari kifungu cha 49 ndio kina kinataja maana ya nia ya kuchocho, kuchochea uasi na kina, kinaweka uh, maana nyingi lakini kinasema hivi na hivi ndio muhimu ili nataka na nataka watanzania wajue kwa sababu maisha mtu asis, akisema kitu nchi yetu unachochea Una, unaambiwa kwamba umechochea neno kuchochea lina maana ya kisheria na nataka muelewe hivi sheria inasema hivi kitendo tamko hotuba au tangazo halitahesabika kuwa ni la kuchochea uasi ikiwa lengo lake ni a kuonyesha kwamba serikali imepotoshwa au imekosea katika shughuli yake yoyote. Kwa hiyo kukosoa sio uchochezi. Sio uchochezi, kukosoa serikali yako haiwezi kuwa uchochezi kwa sababu wewe just fikiria kama serikali ina inakosea halafu unakaa kimya anaathirika ni nani? Ni mwananchi wa kawaida. Ni mwananchi wa kawaida. Kwa hivyo mm. kama sere, kama kuna sheria ya kusema usikosoe serikali, e, ukikosoa ni uchochezi, itakuwa kwamba e, sheria zetu zinataka sisi kama wananchi tuendelee ku, ku, kuathirika na makosa ya serikali na hiyo haiwezekani haiwezekani hata kidogo sasa nataka niendelee ni, ni niseme hivi pia sio uchochezi kuonyesha makosa au hitilafu katika serikali au katiba ya jamhuri ya muungano au katika sheria za nchi au utekelezaji wa haki kwa madhumuni ya kusahihisha au kurekebisha makosa hayo au hitilafu hizo sasa shangazi nataka kukuuliza kitu kimoja sisi tukikaa tukikosoa serikali 
ina maana tunaikosoa kwa sababu tuna enjoy tu kufanya hivyo maana au tunaikosoa ili ijirekebishe mimi ninavyoona nikikosoa nataka ijirekebishe kwa sababu tuko watu milioni hamsini na tano nchi hii na sote lazim tuishi haba kwa amani na nataka sio only tuishi kwa amani tuishi kwa furaha tupate utajiri tuishi tuweze kula vizuri eh? sasa kuikosoa tunataka sote tupate maisha bora sasa ngoja tuendelee kwa sababu leo tunazungumzia hilo hilo swala na nilitaka iliwekwe wazi kwa sababu naona kama pia kumekuwa na hofu fulani la kujadili masuala ya kifedha na kiuchumi na kwa ajili ya watazamaji wetu ni kwamba tumejaribu kutafuta watala mbalimbali wapo ambao walikuwa kweli wana majukumu mengine wamesafiri lakini wapo ambao bila kuwataja majina wamesema kabisa kwa wazi kwamba hawana amani wanafikiri kwamba wakija kukosoa inaweza ikaleta matatizo lakini ili tusimweke kwa muda mrefu tupo pamoja na Ali Khan na shangazi Mishi utaingia muda si mrefu tuko pamoja na Ali Khan mtaalamu wetu kutoka Nairobi na yeye amesema hana tatizo kuongea na yupo tayari katika kujadili swala la kifedha swala kubwa ambalo tumeona na kulisikia limekuwa ni swala hili la maduka ya fedha kufunga na kutokana kwamba Ali Khan amesema kabisa yeye kama mtaalamu wa fedha anapendelea zaidi kuongea Kiingereza kutokana na kwamba maneno mengi yanakuwa yanayakosa yana, yana kwa Kiswahili basi tutafanya kwa Kiingereza lakini basi tutaangalia jinsi tutakavyoelewa hivi vitu tutaeleweshana sisi wenyewe mashangazi um, Ali Khan thank you so much for your time and um, the first question i think is going to be about currency and what we see as the weakening of the of the Tanzanian shilling which um, you know has become a subject because of the closing of the bureaus and many other things the first question we want to know um, and you know the other ladies are going to also ask you a lot of other questions is first to know what could possibly be causing the Tanzanian shilling to weaken so, so the first point I'd make is that with any currency, it's a comment I remember that Mrs. Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom made, and she said, you cannot buck the market. It, what she meant to say is there is no government which has the strength to fight uh, against the market. And I think that's an important point that we should, that we should uh, remember. The second point which you were asking me about what is causing the weakness in the shilling, the shilling has hit a record low. Last time I checked, it was at 2,368 versus the dollar. This is the lowest price I've ever seen a trade at. And obviously it's been a bit weaker in the last few days. I think there are a number of reasons that are causing this weakness. Firstly, I think, you know, the whole cashew transaction where the government basically said they were going to buy, or buy all the cashew supply with money that they clearly didn't have at the time, I think that's got people worried. There's been a $1 billion divergence that the internal auditor has picked up in uh, Tanzania, and, and also I think there's a genuine concern about where Tanzania is going with this very restrictive um, uh, uh, policy, whether you see it in the media, whether you see it in some of the reactions in the, the closing down of the Forex bureaus. And I think that has been a sell signal. You know, people who are able to move their money are thinking to themselves, let's move it somewhere else let's see how things what happens and that's why for example Maria the Kenya shilling has been very strong every time the Tanzanian shilling becomes weak the Kenyan shilling is becoming strong so explain what that, that. Is, explain that Ali Khan what do you mean that that is why so what is happening similarly when you had weakness last year and there was a lot of talk and conversation all of a sudden out of nowhere the Kenya shilling got stronger so, so t in the last three or four days, the Kenyan shilling has been about to go through 100 against the dollar, a price we have not broken for four years. And if I look at that, 
That is a consequence, I think, of flight money out of Tanzania going into Kenya in order to protect the value of people's savings and investments. And I don't think this is big, big money you're talking about. These are the average person who's smart enough to see what is happening is saying, you know what, I'm better off holding the shillings from Kenya for the time being because it's more stable. So it's a combination. Holding the dollar, sorry, just to clear. The to shillings. The so shillings. Holding the Kenya shilling as opposed okay. to the Tanzania shilling. Okay. They're also holding the US dollar. That's why the dollar is strengthening as well. But there are, people are also prepared to hold the Kenya shilling as a mechanism to protect the value of their money. And I've seen this happen twice now. And I think that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting development. But ladies, the lesson in life which has been there for centuries and centuries is that nobody, no president, no king, nobody can fight the market. And you can't shut down the conversation. You shut down the conversation, you create more panic more selling pressure. This is the equivalent of taking a, a, a pistol out of your, uh, out of your uh, pocket and shooting yourself in the foot, not once, but twice and three times, and continuously shooting yourself. It won't make any difference. The market doesn't care what the Serikali is thinking. The Serikali has got to talk to the market and tell them, we are a strong economy. We can make it. We can we can improve this. People who are now selling the Tanzanian shit, you're going to lose your shirts if you continue doing this. But this is not the message we're hearing. The message we're hearing is get your money out as quickly as possible because if you don't get it out, you never will. That is very interesting. Now, labda ni nige kwako shangazi mishi. Hapo umeka. Labda ni ulize kwa sababu kuna mambo mengi tumesikia kutoka kwa mtaalam ikiwemo kwamba kuna mambo mengi yamepelekea kwa shilingi kushuka yani ikiwemo hili swala la korosho ambalo limeonekana kwamba serikali ilikuwa inataka kununua korosho lakini sasa hivi imeanza tena kurudisha wafanyabiashara kutokana na kwamba labda haina uwezo wa kununua korosho zote lakini pia mtaalam amezungumzia sera hizi na pamoja na vitendo ambavyo vina pelekea kufungiwa na kadhalika baadhi ya vitu. Sasa swali ambalo nataka nikuulize vizuri itakuwa labda zaidi kuangalia kwamba e, tumesikia kwamba mtaalamu anasema pale ambapo shilingi ya Tanzania inapokuwa inapungua katika thamani shilingi ya Kenya inaonekana kama kupata nguvu zaidi. Sasa tukiangalia kwa upande wa mwananchi wa kawaida hii ina maana gani? Uh. Asante Shangazi Maria. Cha kwanza mimi ninachoona nataka niungane na mtaalamu kabisa kwamba moja kuna tatizo kubwa la taarifa. Na hiki ambacho ndio nahisi serikali yetu inakosea kwa sababu katika hali ya kawaida mwananchi kama mimi wa kawaida kama nataka kufanya matumizi au nataka kufanya maamuzi yoyote lakini sipati taarifa ninazostahili si ndio kama sipati taarifa stahiki ya kunifanya mimi nijue kufanya serikali kuiambia wananchi wake kwamba jamani kuna shida moja mbili tatu imetokea hivi vitu vinasawazishika kuna au uchumi umeyumba hapa au kuna hiki kimetokea lakini tunatarajia hivi na hivi vitatokea kwa hiyo ile predictability kama haipo na hakuna taarifa inachofanya ni kwamba tunaambiana sisi wenyewe sasa. Kwa sababu sasa inatengeneza hilo omboe la kutokujua kwamba kesho yangu itakuwaje. Na wote tunajuana hapa kwa mfano wananchi sisi wa kawaida mtu vihela vyako umevidunduliza eh umeviweka na nikizungumzia kwa mfano kuna kada kubwa sasa hivi ya sisi middle class ambao tunafanya biashara labda tunachukua vitu kutoka Kenya tunachukua vitu kutoka Uganda wengine wanachukua vitu kutoka Dubai kwa hiyo wanahitaji hiyo practicability kwa sababu kila hela yao tayari wameshapigia mahesabu kwamba mimi hii ndio nimeuza nimefanya biashara yangu nimepata faida kiasi kadhaa hii nitatumia kwenye tiketi hii nitatumia kwenye kununua mzigo sasa pale ambapo hawajui kwamba hiki nina hii pesa yangu kesho itabadilika itakuwaje nitaweza kuibadilisha siwezi kuibadilisha itaibadilisha kwa shilingi ngapi pale sasa ndo unapoona badala ya kuweka hela za Tanzania ngojea niende nchi jirani nikaweke hela za Kenya ambapo nina uhakika kabisa katika mwezi huu au katika kipindi hiki hii uh, thamani ya pesa bado itaendelea kuwa uh, kuwa stable kwa hiyo kuna swala kubwa ambalo mimi naliona kwamba 
bado serikali yetu haijaamini kwamba wananchi wa kawaida wana uhusiano moja kwa moja na hali ya uchumi wa nchi yao na kama wengeamini na kujua hilo wengi wengejua kwamba tuna haki ya kupata taarifa stahiki taarifa zinazokuja kwa muda fasaha na wasinge funga haya mazungumzo kwa sababu yote yanayofanyika yani athiri nini kama mtanzania moja mtu um, kwa kawaida moja kwa moja na haki ya kujua ili nifanye maamuzi sahihi kuhusu biashara yangu kuhusu kazi yangu kuhusu saving yangu na kuhusu maisha yangu nashukuru sana labda tushangazi Fatma um, do you have any questions to the uh, financial expert we have because I think that we are hearing some of the things, but it's, it's very difficult for us to know what is happening. One of the things that I'm seeing maybe is the value. What do you think about the value of the share? Well, you know, um, Ali, I have a question for you. Um, mm. You mentioned that you've seen this happening twice, where the Tanzanian shilling decreases in value against hard currency, such as a dollar, as the dollar, and the Kenyan shilling actually increases in value against the dollar you've said the first time you've seen this Ali in in the past yes. four days but you've seen it before when did you see it uh, Ali I, I saw it uh, under the current regime uh, when when people were getting very very concerned about Tanzanian political risk I think that was in the third quarter of uh, last year you know when when uh, when the president was uh, renegotiating um, a lot of the extractive agreements when there was quite a tough uh, attitude towards the Bureau de Change. I th I, and I think people were beginning to, uh, what is called smart money. Smart money is money which is looking at a situation without nationalism, with a very practical approach, and that money tends to move very, very quickly. So I saw that money I saw that happen at the back end of last year, and now we're seeing a similar trend happen um, uh, again. But this time, obviously, the government's taken very drastic action, and I'm afraid this type of drastic action never bodes well. I've never seen an example of, 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 of this kind of thing working out. I mean, Maria was asking me, saying, you know, if the currency comes back on, is there a chance that it might improve? Yes. I think what will happen is you will have a lot of people who have not been able to sell who will come in and, and just say, look, just sell. And I think, therefore, the risk is what I would call a big possible downside move that would cause an even bigger problem. And maybe that's what they were trying to avoid at the authorities. But as I said, you know, the, the FX market is a, is a $5.1 trillion market a day. It's the most liquid market in the world. You either do what Nigeria has done, which you create two-tier FX systems, and everyone who's a buddy of the ruling party can change at the, at the uh, official rate. Everybody else is changing at the unofficial rate. But that is the only scenario that can come, uh, and unfortunately, it does not work. And you can see that in Nigeria, which is in a growing at around 1%. You can see that in any other economy where they've created a voodoo FX regime. So my concern, to, to and I would be asking the government this, are we going now to the Nigerian solution um, or are we going to remain with a free market currency or as free as we can keep it? And I would strongly urge them, uh, from a policy-making point of view, this is madness, this road of, 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 of closing down a currency. You are, you are, you're, you're, it, it doesn't work. You're far better off dealing with the currency. Maybe it drops sharply and there's a lot of conversation let people talk let them talk about it but at some point you're going to find a recovery as long as the economy comes back and i think fundamentally the tanzanian economy is a strong one mm -hmm. fundamentally that was my President next question magafuli is saying I, I i think he's saying the good things uh, you know for example with the cashew nut story of course he's right our farmers do not get a good price but you can't go and just buy all the cash. Do you have the storage in six months' time? Are those cash nuts going to be as fresh as they were the day you got them? So you've got to put in the infrastructure 
before you start shooting up everything, right? You, if you, if you, if he'd had the infrastructure with the cashew nuts, if he'd had storage capacity, you could have given receipting to the farmers. You could have taken a loan from somewhere to pay for them. The, I, when I saw the report in the East African of a company that's meant to buy all Tanzania's cashew nuts, no one has heard of this company. They didn't even have a website. So how are people, international investors are, will look at this, anybody outside Tanzania will look at it and say, what on earth is going on? How on earth are these numbers going to be going to stack up? They're not. And now you're finding this problem where the reality is so different from what the government wants to say. And the wider the reality becomes, the more difficult it is to keep control of the currency. I think Tanzania is a very strong economy. Thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted to say, Mwana Misi, go, go ahead. Yes, Mimi ni taka tu ni ongezi shangazi kwa mba. Una msema kingereza, una msema kwa mba, the road to hell has been paved with a good intention. Na, 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 nukutaka ni amini kwa mba, serkali na ni anjema, ya kwa kikisha kwa mba, tulajenga uchumi wetu. Lakini, swala ni kwa mba tunajengaji. Mimi napenda kutumia huu mfano kila siku kwamba kama umegundua unaishi kwenye nyumba ambayo msingi wake ni mbovu mno na wewe una ndoto ya kufanya ile nyumba yako isiyo tena kijumba kibanda cha chini iwe gorofa kabla ya kuamua kuvunja kile kibanda ilibidi kwanza uanze kutafuta mchoraji ya kuchorea ramani ujue kwanza umeshapata hela za kujenga hiyo nyumba ya gorofa unayoitaka ujue kwamba kila kitu kinachotakiwa kwenye kile kujenga nyumba ya gorofa unacho then ndo uvunje kile kibanda ukijua kabisa na vunja hiki kibanda tayari siku inayofuatia au baada tu kibanda kile kuvunjwa tayari gorofa linaanza kujengwa ninachokiona mimi ni kwamba tuna ndoto za kuwa na uchumi bora uchumi imara uchumi unaotufikisha kuwa dona country lakini kada hatujakuwa na vile vyote tunavyohitaji kufika huko tumeamua kuvunja kibanda chetu kinachotustiri kwa sasa matokeo yake tuko nje tunapigwa na mvua Uh, shangazi na kumis sana unajua kwa sababu tukikaa pamoja tunacheka sasa unajua shangazi nita kuambia kitu kimoja mimi nige hiyo example yako uloichukua ningeichukua nikaitengeneza hata kuliko hivyo ningesema hivi mimi una, mm. una, una, una kiwanja chako una kimanda chako usikimomoe anza kujenga foundation msingi, msingi wako jirani at least ujenge na nini hii na um, foundation kama unataka kujenga korofa jenga foundation yako nzuri nzuri ya korofa halafu ujenge kichumba chako kimoja ujistiri mle ndani kwanza halafu ndio umomoe kabisa <laughs> kibanda chako usikimomoe kibanda shangazi maana utalala nje hakuna nyumba inojengwa kwa siku moja hiyo nakwambia shangazi Kabisi. na unajua hivyo <laughs> kabisa shangazi tumebomoa kibanda hatuna pa kujistiri hey. na gorofa hatuna hata ramani hakujiwezi <laughs> <laughs> shangazi <laughs> sasa labda tu labda niseme tumesikia kutoka kwa mtaalamu wetu alikan kwamba e, e, soko hili uh, na nadhani sijui kama ulikuwa nafahamu uh, shangazi fatuma maana kidogo wewe najua hata kwenye, kwenye masuala haya ya, ya kimataifa unaelewa mimi sio mtaalamu sana kwamba kuna biashara kwa siku ni trilioni dola za kimarekani trilioni tano nukta moja yani hiyo ni katika wanasema soko la fedha mm -hmm. ni pesa nyingi hii ambayo inazunguka sikiliza ili tuelewane wa Tanzania alikana anasema kwenye soko la, la fedha la dunia kuna mzunguko wa dola trilioni tano nukta moja kwa siku okay sasa wacha tuweke kwenye perspective hiyo kwa kwa mujibu wa Tanzania. Um, budget yetu Tanzania ni eh, trilioni tuelewane wa Tanzania. Ni shilingi trilioni 30 kwa mwaka. Shilingi trilioni 30 ni dola bilioni. Sikilizani vizuri wa Tanzania. Ni dola bilioni eh, kumi na tatu okay hata tukifanya kazi kwa, kwa, kwa hela za budget ya serikali yetu hata 
miaka mia tuseme mm. hatuwezi kufikia siku kumi ya yeah, soko hili soko hili mzungu maana ina maana kwamba serikali yetu haiwezi ku, Shindana. kushindana na soko hili hatuna uwezo wa kushindana na soko uh, la fedha fedha za kidunia hatuna um, ni kama vile na siwezi sijui unawafahamishe vipi wa Tanzania ili waelewe ukubwa wake wa hili soko isipokuwa kusema kwamba bajeti yetu ya mwaka mzima haifiki bajeti yetu ya mwaka mzima haifiki hata nusu siku ya pesa zino, 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 zunguka. zunguka kwenye soko hili za fedha za dunia tatizo unajua tatizo ni nini Maria mm. shangazi Maria mimi naona tatizo ni kwamba hatuelewi ukubwa wa dunia hatuelewi uwezo wa kifedha wa dunia as a whole umeelewa mm. kwa hivyo tunakaa kwenye kibanda chetu nimesikia shangazi na hatu, hatuelewi kwamba kuna watu wanaishi dunia ina ina majengo yaliyokuwa eh, horofa moja na hamsini. hatuwezi kufathama hata ku understand hivyo mm. Na Ali Khan, I just want to ask you something. Are you suggesting that confidence in a market is essential to the stability of of your currency? Ali Khan, did you hear the question? Ali Khan has he muted? Yeah. Ali Khan? Can you hear us? I, I can't hear Fatma now. Can you hear me now, Ali? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, so the question I was asking you, Ali, is um, yes. I remember reading um, a book uh, by Lee Kuan Yew um, yes. on Singapore from third world to first. And yes. one of the things he said was, confidence in uh, in the country is essential yep. to build confidence now would you say confidence um uh, impacts the value of 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 a currency confidence in the currency absolutely i think the currency is the biggest single temperature gauge of the amount of confidence that people have in your country when your currency is hitting an all-time low, confidence levels have collapsed. Um, and to me, the, any currency anywhere in the world is uh, the biggest, most accurate, real-time confidence gauge par excellence. There is no other confidence gauge. And therefore, the message, when, you, when your currency is behaving as it is, the message is that there's something wrong. And the message is there's it could be your communications, it could be your underlying financial uh, balance sheet, it could be the approach that policy makers are taking. But ultimately, the currency, there is no other measure of, co of confidence, measure of a country uh, that I can think of. It's the purest signal in all the noise and this is a signal you cannot ignore but you certainly should not be just switching it off because you don't want to hear it you should be listening to it and you should be thinking how do we mend confidence to improve the currency value and i think that's the key in this in this situation we have seen many currency collapses in the last 24 months let me remind you, Turkish Lira, President Erdogan, when he was fighting uh, with the Americans about, about the situation in the Middle East, the currency last year dropped nearly 50%. This year, the Ghana SEDI is at down about 12.5%. People are not confident about what, what Ghana is doing at the moment. So, absolutely, the purest signal about the state of any country is its currency. 
Thank you very much. And um, I, I just wanted to add another one before we bring uh, Mona Hamisi in. And you talked about the smart money. Um, the smart mm. money, um, the way you put it, is, um, is, is, is basically the money that is not necessarily refined and not necessarily tied to national interest, but is mainly looking at a way to keep the savings safe and so on and so forth. Are we talking about foreign investors when you talk about smart money, uh, local uh, individuals, local companies? What is the mix of smart money usually in, 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 in an African context? I'm sure it's different in, in a more developed economy. That's a great question, Fatma. I think, you know, the, the, this, when I'm talking about smart money, I'm not talking about foreign investors. I'm talking about anybody that's holding your money. It could be you guys. You know, it, it, could, be, uh, it could be your cameraman. It could be anybody. But it's smart money is money that's reading the signs and saying, you know what, I've got school fees to meet. I've got this to meet. And if my savings do what has happened in Zimbabwe, where savings have twice gone to zero because of this fiction of theirs, the bond note fiction, you know, so, so when I'm defining smart money, I'm defining anybody who is thinking about the financial markets and is thinking about their own personal wealth, right? As individuals, money has become quite democratized. If you make the right decisions, you are going to do much better than everybody else. What was the right decision to have done in the case of the Tanzanian shilling? It was to have changed your money and put it into something else and to have done it sooner rather than later. And that's a fact. The numbers are telling us there is no, you can't switch it, switch it off. This is the truth. Yes, thank you right? so much. I mean, change yes. your tens into dollars last year, a month ago, be far better off than somebody else who hadn't done that, who was thinking about it, who was waiting to see what would happen. So I think that when I'm defining smart, and then different economies have more local and more international money. South Africa has a lot of international money. That's why it's a volatile currency. It can move up and down very dramatically. But then if you look at something like Tanzania, Ethiopia, take Ethiopia, that's an extreme example. That's where most of the money is actually local money, or if it's national, it, it cannot come out so easily. So spectrum, and I would say Tanzania is, is more towards the more closed economy spectrum than an open economy spectrum. But ultimately, I think, you know, it, it, as you asked, it is, it is definitely definitely on what people are thinking about the economy and it's not about outside it's also about people inside what they okay we're breaking up a bit um, just just so that we, we, we get the, the 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 network a little bit stable I'm just gonna go quickly um, back to Fatma and then we'll come back to you Mona Misi and then to you Ali Khan because I still have one more question for you um, Fatma hapa tumesikia kwamba eh, kuna hii kitu ambacho mtaalamu wetu amita smart money. Yaani watu ambao wanaangalia fedha zao, wanaangalia labda akiba yao na wanajaribu kuangalia namna gani wanaweza kaiwekeza au wakajaribu pia kuikomboa kwa sababu wanaona kama thamani ya shilingi iki, ikipungua. Eh, na ametoa mfano, amesema mara nyingi ni watu tu, sio kwamba labda ni taasisi au ni uwekezaji wa nje. E, kwa, kwa haraka ukiangalia na ametoa mifano ya baadhi ya nchi kama e, Turkey yani Uturuki pamoja na Ghana ambapo tumeona kwamba fedha yao imeyumba kidogo kutokana na ile swali lako kwamba hata kama uh, wawekezaji au hata wananchi wasipokuwa na imani na serikali au na baadhi ya vitu ambavyo serikali inafanya basi kuna kwa kama na mshtuko katika soko unafikiri kwamba labda ushauri wako kwa serikali itakuwa ni nini Um, serikali lazima irejeshe imani kwa kwenye mfumo wa nchi yetu bila ya imani watapiga kelele watatutisha kama leo um, profesa Kabudi anatisha watu kwamba wasiseme wasi Tanzania nini 
unaweza kufanya yote hayo watagonga ukuta tu kwa sababu kama alivyosema alikana you cannot back the market market is the market soko ni soko na hatuna haja ku, 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 ku kukamata shilingi kuona shilingi tunaona tunaona na sote tumeona Zimbabwe watu wanafanya wana, wanafanya business kwa dola okay tuseme wanaamua kwamba wa, wa wafanye kanye kama kama vile alivyofanya Nyerere warudi wafunge kabisa soko la, soko la dola tuwe hatuna ruksa kutumia dola hata ukikutwa na dola moja unatiwa ndani maana hivyo ndio tulivyokuwa chini ya Nyerere nitakwambia kutatokea nini Tanzania haiwezi kuishi bila ya dola kwa sababu sisi hatuko self sustaining lazima tu import hatutengenezi gari hatutengenezi spare parts ya gari hatutengenezi spare parts za pumps maisha yetu ni kwamba we self reliant mm. lazima tu import okay hata factories viwanda yeah. viwanda vinofanya kazi Tanzania raw materials machinery spare parts lazima zi, ziwe imported mm. na hiyo import inahitajia dola okay sasa ukianza ku control dola kiasi hicho ina maana mtu ano, na tumeyaona haya wakati wa Nyerere tumeyaona na ametolea alikan mfano eh, wa Ethiopia pia tunaona mm. lazima kwanza uende BOT ukaombe ruhusa BOT ili uweze kununua dola kwa kiwango kwa kiwango unachopangiwa unachopangiwa na kwa, kwa kia, kiwango wanachoamua wao shilingi kiko vipi lakini hiyo sio sio market ya kweli kwa hivyo ina maana kwamba ni false market kwa hivyo mimi nakumbuka shilingi ilikuwa unaweza kuinunua BOT kwa shilingi saba kwa dola lakini ukitoka nje utainunua kwa shilingi utanunua dola kwa shilingi mbili, moja na tano kwa hivyo ukisha ukisha kuwa na parallel soko ambalo so, soko, soko halali soko la la market soko la, la, la ukweli na soko la kujidanganya serikali wenyewe tofauti baina ya pesa hizi mbili kuna mtu anailipia my friend na nitakwambia ni nani nilipa kodi kwa sababu kuna difference in these two prices umeelewa mm. kati ya shilingi saba na shilingi moja na mbili okay kuna kama shilingi tisini na tano hapo hiyo shilingi tisini na tano kuna mtu anailipia na kuna mtu anafaidika nayo kwa hivyo ndio walivyokuwa nasema alikan na nilitweet hivi mwisho utakuwa na watu fulani wale noaita watu ndio watapata ruksa ya kubadilisha kwa special rate ya serikali kwa shilingi tuseme hiyo shilingi saba kama ya zamani na kutakuwa na viatu watakuwa wananunua kwa shilingi moja na mbili umeelewa lakini hawa watu ndio watakuwa wanatajirika na, wata, na wanatajirika juu ya mgongo ya watu maskini sawa sasa mimi nataka ni 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 nipeleke hapo kwa mwana Hamisi kidogo mwana Hamisi tukiangalia kwa karibu tunaona kwamba kuna swala hili ambalo mimi naliona ni zito kidogo la uh, wananchi wenyewe kujiamulia tumesikia kwa Likan kwamba wanataka wafanye nini na fedha zao na nikiangalia biashara nyingi hasa tunasema hizi biashara ndogo ndogo kuwa mara nyingi ni akina mama wenyewe ambao wanaendesha hizi biashara e, unafikiri kwamba hii smart money tunaita nipenda hiyo alikan it's a very good terminology smart money you know smart sasa hii smart money hii uh, iko mikononi kwa wanawake na unafikiri kwamba uh, wewe kama mwanamke ambaye pia una, una uko sana kwenye masuala ya kijinsia umeona kwamba wanawake pia wanaonekana kuelewa vizuri swala hili hata kama hawaelewi kitaaluma lakini wanaelewa hali ilivyo na kitu gani cha kufanya Uh, shangazi mimi ningeomba kwanza kabla sijalijibu swali lako nitalijibu ningeomba kwanza ni muulize alikan swali uh, alikan our government has uh, increasingly and i think 
the Fifth Administration has said publicly that it's the government for the for the lowest cadre uh, in Tanzania. So it's the government which stands for poor people. So I would want to know: Is the control of the financial sector going to help the people who are living in poverty? You know, I I I, I accept what you are asking that you know that the government has been seeking to be a populist government to to advance the poorest people in the economy but if you want to do that you've got to make your economy grow you've got to make your economy work you've got to make your economy opportunities for people and right now if I I, I look at Tanzania as a rich country but I don't think it's translating its riches into opportunity for your children, for opportunity for yourselves, and for uh, a increasing uh, wealth creation. So I, so I would argue that these policies, in my view, are the right policies in many cases. I think the, I, the cashew nuts is a good example. That was a good idea, but it is nonsensical execution. You know what? There are two things in life. You can have a brilliant idea, but you have to execute and make your idea happen. I see a lot of brilliance in the administration in terms of ideas, in terms of how they are thinking about improving. Look, the cashew nut story is the story about Kahawa. It's the story about so many things. We have to have a but you can't wake up in the morning and decide I'm going to do it today without having any of the any of the uh, things in place like I was describing. So that's the, that's my fundamental problem. And I think if that's the if that's the pattern that we're going to continue to see, and we've seen that pattern now for quite a few months, then it's a big problem. So that's my that's my challenge to the government. You know, you, you you guys want to want a better economy. You want to create jobs for your people. You want to create uh, opportunities. But this is not going to be the way that 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 it's going to happen. If anything, Tanzania is sitting at the precipice of a currency crisis. That's what we and what the government has done is shut down conversation and said, if you talk about it. And everybody wants to talk about it because they all know about it. Uh, if you want to talk about it, we're not going to allow it. How is that helping the situation? It's a mystery to me. It never has helped the situation. What you need is all your brains to think and talk and be frank and discuss it. And then for, for a, a common position to be taken, which can deal with the situation. Make no mistake, this is a big, big problem. Just by putting it under the carpet, it'll stay there for one week, but then it, like all the rubbish under the carpet, it will come out. And then there'll be a problem we cannot deal with. Thank Asante. you. Sasa shangazi mimi nilitaka nimuulize kwanza mtaalamu ili watu wasijakasema shangazi mishi na wewe uchumi umesomea wapi na fine. Wewe shangazi una smart man. Smart man najifunza shangazi. Sasa my point is kwamba kiusema la ukweli kama alivyosema mtaalamu ni kwamba kama ili uchumi kama wewe unaji uh, unajikweza kwamba ni serikali ya wa chini ambayo tunaamini kabisa wanawake ni zaidi ya watu wengi ambao wako katika wimbi la umaskini au katika hawa wa, wa daraja hili ambalo kila siku tunapigana ili tuweze kutoka kwa lugha ya mjini ni kwamba kwa hali ilivyo sasa uchumi unapovunjika hawa watu ndio wanakuwa wa kwanza kabisa kuathirika na kwa nini wanaathirika unapoleta control nyingi eh wanaume kwa mfano tofauti na wanawake ni rahisi sana wao kwenda kupiga dili kwamba hizi dola hizi zinapatikana wapi na kila kitu na vitu vyote yani zile njia za panya ni rahisi sana kwenda kufanya hivyo lakini kwa wanawake kwa sababu wanawake by, uh, by nature ni watu ambao wanapata sheria na taratibu kwa hiyo pale ambapo unawafunza ndani 
unawa constrain na matukio yake kwa mfano sasa hivi ukianza kuuliza wapo dada wengi ambao walikuwa wanataka kusafiri kwenda kuchukua mizigo wanaenda kwenye ma bureau change wanakuta bureau change zimeisha zimefungwa watu wanaanza kutapeliwa kuna message nyingi zimeshaanza kutembea kwenye ma group ya whatsapp kwamba watu wanatapeliwa wanapewa hela ambazo sizo wanapewa wanabadilishiwa kwa reti ndogo na vitu vingine kama hivyo kwa hiyo point ninayotaka kusema kwamba uchumi ulio imara uchumi unaokuwa ndio uchumi ambao unaweza ukamtoa mwanamke katika lindi la umaskini uchumi uliofungwa uchumi unaoshikwa na wachache si uchumi ambao utamtoa mwanamke au kijana katika wimbi la watu maskini bali itamfanya yeye aendelee kuwa maskini kwa sababu hali inapokuwa tete hata katika ngazi ya familia baba anataka kushika kila alichokuwa nacho sasa hivi nilikuwa nilikuwa naongea na baadhi ya watu nilikuwa naongea na baadhi ya watu ukiangalia tu athari za huku kuminywa kuna watu wakawa wanasema sasa hivi hata wale ambao walikuwa wanaachiwa pesa nyumbani za chakula sasa hivi zinapungua kwa hiyo kama hela za nyumbani za chakula zinapungua basi unakuta hata ile hela ya mama kusave kidogo labda anue vitu vyake anavitaka yeye labda poda sijui nini kwa hiyo kuna mtu alikuwa anatania kwamba sasa hivi imefika kipindi mpaka watu poda zinatushindwa kupaka watu kwenye mabasa hivi tunashindwa tena kula michemsho na nyama choma kwa hiyo ile ripple effect ya decision zinazofanywa ambazo zinatakiwa kuzuia kikundi kimoja inatuathiri sisi wote kwa ujumla wetu Ante sana na pia ningependa kuongezea tu kwamba e, ulichosema kuhusu uh, ushiriki wa kina mama kupata taarifa kama hizi pia tunaoga. Yaani sisi mara nyingi unakuta tunakuwa tunaoga kwamba sitaki kwenda mimi kufanya nini kuvunja sheria. Lakini uh, kabla hapo basi uh, watazamaji uh, tunataka kidogo kucheza uh, video ambayo ilitumwa na benki kuu uh, ikionyesha na wakitoa maelezo zaidi kuhusiana na kufunga uh, benki uh, maduka haya ya fedha na pia kuna uh, taarifa wametoa ikiwemo onyo kuhusiana na kubadili fedha zako kinyume cha sheria hebu tupate kusikia Mnamo tarehe 27 Februari 2019 Benki Kuu ya Tanzania ilifanya ukaguzi wa kawaida wa maduka ya kubadilisha fedha za kigeni jijini Dar es Salaam na kubaini kwamba maduka mengi yanaendesha biashara hiyo pasipo kuzingatia sheria, kanuni, taratibu na taratibu za utoaji wa huduma ya kubadilisha fedha za kigeni. Kufuatia ukaguzi huo, Benki Kuu ya Tanzania imeanza utaratibu wa kufuta leseni za maduka yote yanayoendesha yali, biashara hiyo bila kuzingatia masharti ya leseni. Zoezi hili linaendelea. Mnamo mwezi Desemba mwaka 2018 Benki Kuu ya Tanzania ilifanya ukaguzi wa maduka kubadilisha fedha za kigeni nchini kote na kubaini kuwa mengi hayakidhi matokeo ya kisheria ya biashara hiyo. Hivyo iliandikia ili, ili maduka hayo kuyataka kutoa maelezo kwa nini asifutue leseni kutokana na ukiukwaji huo. Hatua zilizochukuliwa jana zinatokana tasimini ya taarifa ambazo Benki Kuu ya Tanzania ilizipokea kutoka kwa waendeshaji wa maduka hayo. Aidha, kama ilivyoelekezwa katika taarifa ya Benki Kuu ya Tanzania ya mwezi Novemba 2018 na Januari 2019, huduma za kubadilisha fedha za kigeni zinaendelea kupatikana katika taasisi za fedha kote nchini pamoja na maduka ya fedha za kigeni ya shirika la Posta Tanzania. Benki Kuu ya Tanzania inapenda kutahadharisha umma kutotumia huduma zisizo rasmi za ubadilishaji wa fedha za kigeni kutokana na hatari mbalimbali ikiwemo kuibiwa na kupewa fedha bandia. Aidha, utumiaji wa huduma zisizo rasmi kinyume cha sheria za nchi hatua kali za kisheria zitachukuliwa dhidi ya watoaji na watumiaji wa huduma hizo zisizo halali black market. Benki kweli ni moyo wa uchumi wa katika ongea na shangazi. Na katika kipindi chetu cha leo tupo kama kawaida na mashangazi Fatma na 
shangazimishi na shangazimishi tumemisi hatuko nice studio jamani hata chai haishuki <laughs> haishuki ndio tumegomea <laughs> <laughs> lakini pamoja na yote tuko pamoja na mtana ali kasa tu yeye ana kusalimia lakini pia anatupa mawaidha na anatupa ushauri na anatupa utaalamu wake kutoka jijini Nairobi nchini Kenya na leo hii tumezungumza sana kusema masuala ya kifedha na uchumi na kama unavyofahamu shangazi Fatma sasa hivi shughuli ni pevu kwa sababu kila mtu yuko kwenye biashara unajua hata sisi mara nyingi zamani ilikuwa kwamba kina mama wao hawatakiwi kujua sana masuala ya uchumi sasa siku hizi ingawa sio lazima tujue lakini tumesikia kwamba kuna smart money sikiliza mashangazi tuna smart money sasa tucheze <laughs> Shangazimishi uongo wewe una smart money. Mimi ninayo smart money. <laughs> Sasa Alikan, does smart money move from currency into an other commodity that is valuable for example gold? Is is money that moves without sentiment and emotion into another currency where it's going to hold its value or appreciate? or if you ladies were going to go to Dubai and invest your money in something and bring it back to Tanzania that would also be smart smart business so it's really about um, using your using your mind in order to intelligently keep the value of your assets i want to make the most of the 10 minutes and i want to very quickly ask from you you talked about some of the things that may cause uh, the current the currency not to be that strong and you talked about communication which i think we've talked about it extensively and you also talked about policy making but you talked about the balance sheet as well um which yes. is looking at the health of the economy and the balance of trade for example um Correct. if you look at it quickly um if in the case of tanzania because you're an expert also of the east african uh, financial markets do you see that there's some areas that might be of concern for foreign investors for smart money and even I think just for anyone who's trading um, in, in, fin in the financial markets, so how healthy is, is, is the balance of trade and other, other issues and debts, for example, and everything else? So, so I would say that, that one of the big issues about is something that I heard uh, you guys speak about earlier, which is about policy making certainty. I think a lot of people are unsure about Tanzanian policy making. It can change. Somebody might wake up tomorrow and decide, oh, no, we've got to change this or change that. So there's a perception in the global market and in, in the East African market that, that uh, Tanzania can change the, the, the way the pitch is at a moment's notice. And that brings uncertainty to a currency. I think also if you look at if you look at the balance sheet have those cashew nuts been sold yet no. so they're they're still sitting somewhere normally that would be about 500 million dollars of income that Tanzania would have received by now is Tanzania a big enough economy to to say to itself no I'm going to stand tough I don't need the 500 million I don't need it now and we're going to show everybody that we are the cashew nut kings and if you look at it in, you, you are seeing that happen in many different areas you think of, think of yourselves if you're running your if you're running your daily affairs and uh, you know you have a thousand shillings every day and today for whatever reason you say I don't need your thousand everybody knows that how are you going to eat how are you going to have your dinner how are you going to pay for your transport it is no different I think if you bring it to that level, the same thing has happened. So I think we need more certainty, we need better communications, and we and the government needs to think that if it really wants to get a better deal for Tanzania Inc., a better deal for the one Inchi, stop shooting from the hip, think a little bit longer term, and you will achieve what you want to do, but you cannot achieve it overnight. And I think that's the problem here. So from that perspective, that's how I look at it. I think from the from the balance sheet, look, unlike Kenya, you guys haven't been borrowing as much as we have, so that's a good thing. I think I have to give uh, credit to the president. I think when it comes to infrastructure, he knows what he's doing. You won the Tanga pipeline. Kenya should have won that. It was a criminal loss by Kenya to lose that. It was a big win 
by Magafuli. Look at the cost of your railway. We have spent three dollars, you will build the same railway for one dollar. So there are good things that are happening, but at the same time there has to be joined up economic thinking. And at the moment, my impression is that people are very nervous to go and have a conversation with the president and say, Bana, it is not working rice. We have to think different. And my fear is that there are not enough people in Tanzania who are prepared to tell him. And that is the key today. If someone should tell me what is in the Tanzanian national interest, the Tanzanian national interest is, is, is what is what is going to make the difference is a proper conversation with the president. You can't do this. You can do this. We believe you're doing the right thing. But if you do it like this, it's going to cause more damage. And I, that seems to me, from the way I read the situation, to be the issue here. Thank you so much. And that has been very insightful. Um, because we come Have I given you something to think about? Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I mean, this is so interesting. And um, I think you did. So that to want to, yes. I want to go to Mona Hamisi <laughs> quickly to uh, give us a quick one. Um, because as we're coming to the end, it would be really good to hear as well as advice and your insight of way forward. I mean, we know where we are. We're starting to get a clearer picture now, I think. But yeah. where are we going? Kwa hiyo, Shangazi, labda wewe na ushauri gani hasa kwa upande wa wananchi na hasa kwa upande kina mama, upande wa wafanyabiashara wadogo na wakati. Kwamba una ushauri gani kwa serikali kwa ujumla kwamba kitu gani kifanyike? Mimi shangazi kwanza nilitaka tu kusisitiza kwa kwamba mwananchi yoyote yule wa kawaida anaweza kuvumilia vitu vingi sana anaweza kuvumilia kuto kuangalia bunge live anaweza kuvumilia e eh, kuto sijui kufanyaje lakini inapokuja mahala ambapo hawezi kupata ugali wake inapokuja mahala ambapo hawezi kusomesha mtoto wake inapokuja swala kwamba hawezi tena kujilipia bili au hana huo uhakika basi hapo sasa unawapush watu to their limit wazungu wa, wa wanasema kwa hiyo mimi naamini kabisa ni best interest ya serikali na wadau wote kuhakikisha kwamba uchumi unasimama kwa sababu bila uchumi kusimama haya mambo mengine hayatazuilika Yes, kusimama imara. Haya mambo mengine hayatazuilika. Wanasema adui yako muombe njaa. Mtu akishakuwa na njaa hana tena sense of humility. Hawezi tena kuwa na busara. Hawezi tena kukaa na wewe kujadili kutumia hekima. Hawezi tena kukaa na wewe kufikiria ya kesho wakati yeye sasa hivi hajala. Kwa hiyo ni muhimu mno mno kama tunalitakia taifa letu amani kama tunataka tuwe wa Tanzania wenye furaha swala la kuhakikisha kwamba uchumi umesimama si swala la viongozi ni swala la ambalo linatakiwa lichukuliwe katika uzito wake na kuhakikisha kwamba kila mtanzania anapewa nafasi ya kuboresha maisha yake katika uchumi ulio wazi na uchumi ulio imara Asante sana na, na naomba nichukue nafasi hii kuaga na kuwashukuru sana. Thank you very much Ali Khan. Asante sana mm. Shangazi Mishi kwa kuwa pamoja na sisi tutamalizia hapa studio. Tunawatakia jioni njema. Asante sana. Asalamu. Asante sana Shangazi. Bye. 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 Nimewamisi studio. Nikiacha <laughs> yangu. <laughs> Sasa labda kwa kumalizia tu uh, kabla sija kuomba nawe pia utoe ushauri kulikuwa na swala moja ambalo e, nimeliipata kupitia mtandao ni baadhi ya wafanyabiashara wa maduka ya fedha ambao wamesema kwamba je utaratibu wa wao kufungiwa na BOT imezingatia sheria na utaratibu wa kisheria labda kama mwanasheria unaweza ukasema nini kuhusu hili okay kwenye sheria tuna kitu kinaitwa due process okay Uh, na nilikuuliza due process uh, ni, ni maana ina maana gani kwa Kiswahili tafsiri yake mnaambia utaratibu wa kisheria ina maana kwamba kila kitu kinachofanywa um, kabla huja hujawa hujawa punished hujaadhibiwa hujaadhibiwa lazima if, ufate utaratibu wa kisheria sasa tuje kwenye hili swala la due process Nimetizama sheria za Bureau du Change hususan uh, regulation ya Foreign Exchange Act regulations za Bureau du Change lotengenezwa uh, tarehe 30 mwezi wa sita mwaka 2015 ili tuelewane kwenye regulations hii 
eh, kuna due process kabla benki kuu haijaamua kumfungia na tuelewane kitu kimoja wananchi due process ni haki yetu kwamba hakuna mtu anaweza kuja akakufungia biashara yako akakuadhibu bila ya kufata utaratibu wa kisheria hata uh, amri hata kitoka kwa nani haiwezekani kuna utaratibu wa kisheria lazima ufatwe na chini ya hii foreign exchange bureau du change regulation eh, regulation number 35 mm -hmm. in, uh, inaipa benki kuu um, uwezo wa ku wa ku inspect wa kukagua wa kukagua na bureau du change lakini ili tuelewane regulation number 37 inasema hivi halafu tuulize kitu moja wameanza na hii ali, alisema alikana alisema kwamba kaona shilingi li, inashuka na, na shilingi ya Kenya shilingi ya Tanzania inashuka na shilingi ya Kenya na panda mwisho wa mwaka jana na sasa hivi unajua mwisho wa mwaka jana kulitokea nini Arusha kitendo hiki ki? kitendo hiki cha ukaguzi ambao ukapelekea pia kufunga walikwenda wakafunga mabiru dushio ya Arusha Kenya shilingi ya panda shilingi ya Tanzania Hawajifunza. Hawajifunza. Wamekwenda wamefanya hivyo hivyo. Da. Mimi hivi ndio vitu sielewi kwa sababu em, wazungu wana msemo you must learn from experience. Inabidi okay. ujifunze kutoka na makosa yako. Sio makosa pia. Mm. Experience. Matendo yako. Experience ni ni kama matendo kitu ambacho mazoea. Mm. Kwa kitu unajifunza kutoka mazoea. Uzoefu. Sasa, mm. uzoefu. Mm. Sasa wewe ushaona kwamba ukifanya hivi kinatokea hichi. Bado unakuwa unafanya hivyo hivyo. Sasa I'm sorry. Sasa mimi nakuachia ya mwisho. Pole sana. Na kuachia sasa ya mwisho kwa kutoa ushauri kwa serikali ili tuweze kumaliza kwa kuwa na ushauri mzuri ambao pia mimi naamini hivi kwamba uli tuliongea hapa mwanzoni na ulieleza vizuri swala hili la kukosoa na uchochezi unapoonyesha kwamba kuna jambo fulani ambalo limefanyika ambayo sio nzuri au kuna mapungufu pia ni sehemu ya ukosoaji ambapo sasa unawa, unawapa kazi wahusika wajirekebishe lakini pia kama una ushauri una ushauri gani hasa nadhani kwa ajili ya kuweza ku, kuweka hali vizuri ndani ya muda huu mfupi kwa sababu kuna ile ya long term yani ya muda mrefu lakini kwa muda huu mfupi ili tuweze ku, kuona kwamba kuna mabadiliko na tuweze kuona kwamba hali imetulia kitu gani kifanyike uh, huu ni mwaka 2019 tunaingia kwenye mwaka 2020 mwaka sasa swala ni hili aidha serikali haijali na inadhani kwamba ita sio serikali tuseme CCM kwa sababu hii ni kuhusu CCM tuna hmm. ai CCM haijali na inajua kwamba itashinda eh, uchaguzi mwaka ma, ma, mwaka mwaka wenu kwa kwa by huko by crook mm -hmm. kwa hivyo hawajali mm -hmm. okay kwa, kama kwa goli kwa za mkono wanaposema wenyewe kama kwa goli za miguu tutajua huko uko mbele ya kwa hivyo hawajali lakini Kitu muhimu ni hivi wa Marekani wana msemo msemo wao ni huu It's the economy stupid kwa Kiswahili ni ni uchumi uchumi stupid sasa stupid kwa Kiswahili sijui kuna mpumbavu na mjinga ingawa bado tunabishana tuna nipi mm -hmm. ni, ni exactly either eh, ni uchumi mpumbavu wao ni uchumi mjinga eh, Okay that is the same it's the economy is stupid Na alikuwa ni rais rais Clinton ambaye alitumia hiyo dhidi ya rais Bush kwa kwanza Ehe maisha maisha usidhani kwamba uchumi ukishuka mtu mwingine atapata lawama There is the buck will stop and this is another one mm -hmm. Kuna rais wa Marekani kasema the buck stops here kwa kiani kwa kiani rais na nakwambia kitu kimoja uchumi ukishuka na watu maisha yao yakishuka nataka tena hii nasema wazi kwa rais Magufuli 
hakuna mtu mwingine yeye yote atopewa lawama isipokuwa wewe mheshimiwa rais John Pombe Magufuli kwa sababu the buck stops with the president and the president is responsible and will be made accountable for the economy simple sasa kitu gani kifanyike kitu gani kifanyike very simple nilimsikiliza nilimsikiliza alikan 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 kasema hivi muhimu ni confidence to rebuild confidence in our economy okay tutai build imani vipi kwenye economy yetu kwanza okay kwa sababu yote hii imetoka kwenye kwenye lack of confidence kwamba hatuna confidence mm -hmm. kwanza policies zisitoke kwa mtu mmoja overnight policies lazima ziwe discussed kuwe na discourse ndio kuwe na public discourse kuhusu policy ili ili ikija change watu wanaitegemea na wanajua kwamba wanajiandaa wanajianda, mm. na wanajua, wanajua hii change inaletwa kwa sababu ya hivi hivi na hiyo public discourse lazima ku discuss mm. positive na negatives za hizo changes kwa sababu hiyo inaleta stability pili mm -hmm. ukianza kustopisha watu kutoa mawazo mimi nimepata shock sana leo kumsikiliza eh, kabudi pala magamba kabudi anasema kwamba watanzania tutakiona anamtisha nani shangazi kwamba hatuna rusa kusema tena my friend tutasema kwa sababu sisi tunajua sheria tuna haki chini ya sheria kukosoa na tutaendelea kukosoa okay kwa hivyo discourse ni muhimu sana na sisi kama watanzania tumezoea kukaa unajua ukikaa kwenye mkutano mimi mimi eh, eh, ni utamaduni fulani vile mm. hatupigi unajua ukikaa kwenye board meeting watu wapigi kura mm mtazungumza mpaka muishi mtajadiliana mm, consensus ndio mm. mm. muafaka kufika muafaka hakuna mtu anatoa amri ni mazungumzo mpaka tunafika muafaka kwa hiyo unashauri kwamba pia sisi kama nchi tuendelee na mjadala tuendelee kubishana mpaka tutakapofikia muafaka na pia na pia rais lazima and i a uh, uh, ajadiliane maswali na ndio maana ana ministers cabinet cabinet mm. e, nataka kue, kuelezeni maana ya minister kwa kiingereza mm. minister maana yake ni mshauri mm. you minister to somebody una mshauri ndio maana una cabinet na wanaita mawaziri mm. kazi ya waziri sio kwamba una represent rais tu ni washauri wa rais kwa hivyo mimi naona lazima tuendelee kujadiliana maamuzi yasitoke kwa mtu mmoja maamuzi lazima kuwe na public discourse so that we create confidence imani imani kwenye economy yetu na kwenye nchi yetu kwa sasa hivi ni mwenye ameshtuka naogopa tusiogope lakini mimi e, naomba nichukue fursa hii kwa kumalizia kipindi chetu cha ongea na shangazi tuna mengi na naweza nikawaahidi kwamba baada ya kipindi kisha bado tutaendelea na mjadala wetu hapa studio lakini kwa sababu muda umetupa mkono basi sina la ziada naomba niwashukuru sana na tukutane tena wiki ijayo katika ongea na shangazi pamoja na shangazi Fatma na shangazi Mishi basi nawatakia jioni njema asanteni na kwa herini